Hi, my name is Jaceli Bacase, and I'm a social media addict. While I take full accountability for my addiction, I do have to put a little bit of the blame on this little piece of technology that allows me to check my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Tumblr, my Pinterest, my LinkedIn, and my Vine accounts all throughout the day with just a click of a button. I know I'm not alone given all the top of the heads that I see, and there is nothing wrong with being a social media addict. However, as I stalk my social media sites, I come across some very troubling posts, pictures, and comments that serve to bully only fellow social mediaites. According to a report by the Washington Post, 10, 9 out of 10 teen Facebook users have reported that they have witnessed bullying on social media sites. While bullying isn't something new, with the development of new technology and new techniques are being created and employed such as social media bullying. With me to discuss what has become an epidemic is bilingual licensed high school counselor Joe Barreto. Mr. Barreto is currently a high school counselor at the Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics High School. He holds a Master of Science in Education from St. John's University and he was my high school counselor. Thank you for joining me, Barreto. Thank you for inviting me. All right, Brian. So define what bullying is and its various forms and techniques. Well, bullying over the years has changed, actually, in its definition. When I was a kid, bullying was somebody picking on you, somebody that was maybe a little stronger, a little bigger, and would push you around and took advantage of that size or strength situation. Over the years, bullying has taken on from cyberbullying online, which is people that actually stalk other people, people that torment you through posts or by posting things that are untrue or, po or taking pictures and manipulating them or, or even words that you may have expressed in one shape or form and posted that up in order to intimidate you, to make you fearful, and actually to start self-doubting yourself, mm -hmm. which sometimes then leads to people being depressed, people being upset, and causing them to do things they normally wouldn't do. So throughout the years, it's made a more drastic change. Yes. It's extremely. And while I mentioned earlier, bullying is not something new. But what would you say is the state of bullying today in our society, more of a rather, in a, rather than a school environment? In society, bullying has taken a form of more what's communicated and the way it's put out there. So in other words, if you have someone that wants to express something and another person is not in favor of it, the person who wants to express at all costs will do whatever it takes and that might just lead them to approach this in, 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 in a kind of a dirty way. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll do things such as um, take excerpts from uh, different writings that the person may have posted on other places or recording something with the phone you could record and take pictures of god knows everything nowadays mm -hmm. and by just a simple edit with the software even that's on an yeah. iphone they can make a lot of things that were innocent seem nasty or a quote taken out of context and when it's done repeatedly it's bullying yeah we've seen them very often and in your profession ex professional experience is bullying something that you have to address more and more the last couple of years, a lot of the arguments or uh, discourse among students and uh, even in some places adults that they'll see, they'll come and they'll tell me how they've seen their child go through certain things, has been through a Facebook post. Or, really? um, I'll take it back even as far as MySpace and uh, there was another one that started it even earlier than that where... It was, there was Skonex. Skonex, that. that was it. <laughs> and what that Sconex actually was more troublesome because they had an administrator that was another student who had one account and kind of led this chat amongst a group mm -hmm. and that started spiraling into arguments and people saying he said she said kind of things and unfortunately it's it's so prevalent now because everybody doesn't want to just enjoy something if we go out somewhere Instead of just enjoying the moment, mm -hmm. everybody wants that selfie, that picture, that Everyone's dramatic effect, it. and then show how great their life is and put it up there for everybody else to see. So sometimes somebody will see that, and if they're jealous, they'll come at them. 
yeah. and, and use it against them. So that's led to arguments, fights, um, threats, and things like that. So it's, it's a lot more of a, a jealousy sort of thing. It becomes manipulative. Absolutely. Okay. And could you share some of the professional experiences you've had in guiding children through bullying encounters? I've had best friends who have been friends since they were little until they got to high school and then through a post that one made because they liked someone or made a comment or a sub as they, they say was mm -hmm. thrown. Um, you know, this girl looked like this or look at her, who does she think she is? Without even mentioning a name, but everybody knows who they're talking yeah. about. And then the next day it rolls into the office where they start arguing in the hall. I saw what you posted, I saw what you did, we, you know. Yeah. We know Take we, it down. we had those incidents. Yep. Yes, we've seen that. Take it down, you know what? And then they started at that point. And, and it's sad because instead of just talking, it's, everything is so instant. So let's say you're upset. Back in the day before any of this, by the time you saw that person again, you kind of calmed down a little bit. You forgot about it. Now that, it's like, just like two seconds ago, I just did this. And you're in my face. Yes, so. we've seen screenshots have done made a lot Absolutely. of a lot of incidents happen. Absolutely. Okay, so okay, so this brings me to my next question. Um, why is, do you think there's a cloak of, a cloak of silence when it comes to being bullied? So the person being bullied? Yeah, like why why do you feel like they have to hold that silence in? I think part of it is. They're afraid that if they stand up for themselves, other people might criticize them. Other people might say, you know, you should have just kept it to yourself or why didn't you just handle your business on your own? You know, it, again, the problem is because it's so immediate and so quick and what you put up now, 10 other people got in another second or mm -hmm. more, depending on how many friends, quote unquote, followers. you have and followers and God knows what else it spirals out of control. And then if it's in any way, shape, or form what they deem to be funny, mm -hmm. then it's it spreads so even further and it becomes viral. And then that person now just feels like everybody's against them, even though half of those people don't even exist anywhere near them, but they feel that it's, you know, oh my God, look at this, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's against me. And they generalize and then they, they internalize it so much that it overwhelms them and it, clo it causes them to shut down and they change. They'll, they'll change physically, they'll change emotionally, spiritually. You'll see it. Wow. You know, okay, so tell me a little bit about, have you, okay, I'm sorry. What are some behavioral changes that parents should look out for in their children? If they notice that their child, who normally is very upbeat and outgoing, and participates in all the family events and um, does well in school, all of a sudden doesn't want to go to school, they, they're always sick or they feel that they are um, not up for it today or their grades start to drop, that might be some of the indicators. As well as if they snap back at their parents, if they're very short, if they be, you know, start cursing or nasty with them for no apparent reason, it's because now that, per the, that person is taking it out on the people that have nothing to really do with it, but they mm -hmm. have no other way to, to get that off of them. So yeah. they just take it out against the people closest to them. Yeah, so... You know. So the parents should look out for those things. Also, if you notice that friends don't come around anymore and they're not invited, and if they were very social now, then they're always home, that can also be an, an indicator. So those are some red flags that parents need to pay yes. attention to. All right, so... We've talked about children, teenagers. Um, does bullying happen to adults? Yes. Mm. With adults, unfortunately, you would think that they would, you know, take a step back and look at things. But unfortunately, you know, social media has pushed people to almost create a, a different persona for themselves. So what you'll see when you meet them face to face, when they're on any kind of platform online, they'll make themselves to be this other person, bigger than life in some instances. And then you have people that become jealous of that, or they see something and they want to criticize, or they want to um, embarrass them. Mm -hmm. And I've seen instances of that. And 
God knows everybody has, um, you know, instances where they feel, well, you know, this person, look at the life, look at the car they have, look where they went on vacation, look at this and look at that. And then, again, they'll, as adults, throw some subs and say, how could they do that if they don't work? And how could they? And then yeah. that's when it'll just... Throw some shade in there. Even within family. I've had family members that have gone at it because of something that was posted. Even the saddest thing, you didn't invite me to your daughter's party. Then there's an argument that spiraled into a fight, and now they don't talk to each other. It makes no sense. It's something so small. Absolutely. Well, do you feel like females get bullied differently than males? Yes. How? Females, in, in my experience with the girls in school, they hold on to every word that was said, written, thought of, whatever. And they won't let it go. Mm -mm. Ever. Whereas, you know, so, and the girls, they also, they always want to one-up each other. And they'll have their, their little factions and cliques join in on the fun. And it's scary because now you're building from what was one and one of a disagreement or whatever. Now you have other yeah. people that are brought into the mix. Boys tend to, for the most part, deal with it more on that one and one you know, and they'll try to sell it then, if not in person. I've had girls that fought five or six years ago and still won't talk about the other, God forbid I mentioned the name of whatever person because, you know, they don't want to hear from it. Yeah. So in that case, it's a little, they're tougher and girls are harder. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I always make an effort to try to just to address all sides of the issue. So talk a little bit about the bully. The bully. Well, like I said, back in the day, the bully was the one who thought they were stronger, mm -hmm. faster, whatever, and wanted to impress that upon whoever they were picking on. Um, now, people hide behind the device. Mm -hmm. So I've seen instances where on paper or online, they're the toughest and they'll, they're critical. And then when you meet them face to face and in person, it's a whole other realm. Right. So it's not real. It's not reality. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they hide behind the fact that no one or anonymous, anonymously, like I've seen people do it as well and or make fake accounts, yeah, which is even worse. That. <laughs> so, you know, I think for the most part, though, the, the a bully in in that sense is someone who's not comfortable with themselves who has other desires and wishes that hasn't come through for whatever reason, and if someone else has it, they may want it, and the way they're going to get that attention drawn is by constantly outing that other person and making them feel bad and making them feel less than what they are. And all they're doing is projecting what they have inside themselves and projecting it on somebody else. Stuff like that. Yes. It's sad. And, and, and it gets to a point where, unfortunately, and, and that's the ones that usually make the news, where a lot of the bullying that gets to the extreme when someone ends up, you know, killing themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, either because they found out a gossip about them and that person's so embarrassed that they can't, they don't think they can deal with it, so they choose to hurt themselves or end their life. And even when it comes to sexual orientation and the person who's bullying wants to, you know, mock them constantly or, or out them for whatever reason and then that person can end up hurting themselves as well because they don't know how to handle that or to combat it enough where it stops yeah not everyone can handle the issues the right. same it's it's you it's a matter of experience and everything you kind of just have to fight through it sometimes and unfortunately it happens to the people that don't really have a support network where they can fall back on and go to Mm -hmm. Where they can get get that if they're not strong, they can get the strength from everybody else to to help things get better. So they'll just withdraw, and unfortunately, the the ending is usually where they get hurt or end their lives. Okay, so when I was researching for the show, I came across a myriad of comments that range from em empathetic to apathetic. Some had gone as far as to say that the fault of the person being bullied, or that the person's parents are at fault. So what are your thoughts on that? 
that it's the parents fault that the person was being bullied yeah either it's oh it's your fault that you're being bullied or it's your parents fault that's being bullied i mean i don't think it's it's any of their faults i mean unfortunately mm -hmm. it's a situation where they're in and if the person is not set up to be to be able to combat it or to you know come back to that person and and just say look you can say what you want it doesn't bother me and mm -hmm. genuinely not that it affect them that would be great but yeah. unfortunately you know it's once they put that little bit of self-doubt in you or they'll put something that got to your head those bullies eat that up and they, mm. they feed on it and you know it's like blood in, in a shark tank they'll just come running and they know they got you and so I can't say it's a parent I can't it's a, it's a combination of things almost like a perfect storm that leads it to get to that point yeah well, okay. Well, I'm going to pull up some comments that I found within my research, and then I want your thoughts on that. Okay. All right, so, do you agree that social media is the breeding ground for bullies? I think it's one of the breeding grounds. Um, it makes it easier because you can hide behind it. You mm -hmm. could be anonymous. You could get help doing it and no one will know who helped you to do it. You know, um, whereas again, your typical bully from 30 years ago was just the guy who had a bigger mouth, wanted to puff out his chest and show that they were the man or the woman. And yeah. until someone knocked them down from that pedestal, that was it. With this way, there's so many ways that you could just continue to do the bad things. You can continue to build that block, easy. that wall. It, and it's, it's hard. But I, it, so it makes it easier for those people that are so unsure of themselves. And they're, they're really weak, but they build their strength because they know that just by pressing send, they can do harm to somebody else. And they're not going to get anything back for a long while. Okay, so that goes to my question. So, so it's not easier to stop a, a cyber bully? The easiest way, what I tell my, my guys and girls in school is disconnect it, delete it, block it, and pretty much, almost instantly, the moment you do those things, people will still chatter amongst themselves and, and, and make comments, but out of sight, out of mind, you won't see it. So it won't there's nothing. You. There's nothing that they can say to you or do to you or post about you or whatever. That's why it's very important just for people in general who think, oh, this is just an easy comment that I'm gonna post or this is just a picture that I'm gonna put up. Not knowing that it's not just that you did it to yourself or to your friend, everybody gets it. And they can keep it and use it later. So you're better off just eliminating that from your life. It simplifies things a hell of a lot. A lot more, yeah. Okay, so all right, so a teacher suggested that you report bullying to police. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts? It, that's a hard one. We don't necessarily report it to police in, mm -hmm. that, in that instance. Um, in, in New York City, at least in the, in the Department of Education, if a teacher, let's say, finds out something is going on, they would notify someone in guidance. And then we would, um, if we know the students well, it's usually a better way to deal with, to handle mm -hmm. it, keeping everyone else outside of it. Um, if it's something that becomes a threat, a physical harm that we see immediate, then we take it to security and, and, and to the administration as well, who then would report it to uh, police. But if it's something where someone says, oh, you know, this person said that, you know, I, I'm not smart enough to do these things and, and their feelings are hurt. Mm -hmm. That people say, oh, he's bullying you. It depends on your interpretation. You know, we're yeah. all gonna, you have two little kids that tell each other, you're not my friend anymore. It's not because really. you're not agreeing. But yet, my fr uh, f one of my best friends, his daughter was pulled out of uh, her classroom and admonished for telling another girl, you're not my friend anymore. Really? And they said she was a bully. She was seven years old. Really? I mean, I just. There's a fine line. It's a term that's overused a lot. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is it loses it, its value. value and its strength. Because if, when it's used 
in the proper context, it, you know it's something real then. But like everything else, you know, people just, you hear it so often that it just becomes almost part of the norm. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, that's what happens a lot. That's when the people get most affected because it just is constant. Yeah, so no one really it. picks it up, you know, and mm -hmm. makes it, the, um, gives it the importance that it deserves under those certain circumstances. That's when people start feeling like, well, it might not be as big as I'm thinking it is Correct. just because it's normal. Correct. Yeah. All right. Okay, so what are some steps children and parents can take to end bullying? Cyberbullying in particular, like I said earlier, it would be disconnecting yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I've had students that did it and they're like, I can't do it. I don't think I can do it. But, and they did it and they, they were the happiest afterwards. They found they had more time to be with their friends. They had more time to be with their family. They were, did better in school because they weren't doing a homework assignment here and uh, sending out a tweet with this one, I mean, multitasking. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, and also confronting and getting support to get that person to confront if they know who that person is. Yeah. And, and not in a, in a bad confrontational physical way, but in other words, just going to them and saying, look, that's not really cool what, you, what you're doing. I know you're upset with me. You know, let's just handle this the right way. And I've seen in, in cases where they're like, yeah, I'm sorry. And they take down stuff they put and they've apologized or they put up an apology online, which I, I always think is a nice way to, you know, you put it out there and now say you're sorry out there as exactly. well. Exactly. Now everyone gets to see that. You and know, it also shows that, you know, I screwed up my bad. You know, let me fix what I did. Mm -hmm. And it, it works out a lot better those ways. Okay. All right, so let's move from the problem to the solution. In response to the ever-growing concern with bullying, um, federal action has taken towards bullying to stop such mandatory programs and workshops in many public schools. Do you agree with these anti-bullying campaigns that are happening? That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, you could put as many posters up and a poster's a poster. Mm -hmm. It's like when you go on the train and you know how they have the advertising, do you really remember all the stuff you've seen on the train? Not really. No. So I think what's good is if you have good communication in a school setting from top to bottom, from administration down to the person who's, let's say, you know, working in part-time in a cafeteria or whatever, and they see something, let's say, because they're with the kids when they eat lunch. Mm -hmm. and they help solve the problem right then and there, you just avoided something that could have escalated into something worse. So something very big. Who knows? Right. And it's all because if you have that, that nurturing community where there's trust, where you have someone that you can go to, that you feel comfortable, that you feel that you can be yourself mm -hmm. and not be judged, Yeah. everyone else feeds off of that. Remember when you're born... You don't know what hate is. Mm -mm. You're taught what so hate, hate is when you're old, as you get older. Mm -hmm. So it's harder to kind of unlearn that part. Just to get all out of you. So mm -hmm. you need to, and it's a lot of energy. If you think about it, the people that have these issues, you know, they're, they're, they're miserable because it's a lot of energy to put out all that hate and all those words and all that because you, you always have to be on top of your game because the moment you slip, you're done. So I think something better than all the posters and stuff would be to have um, different books that are out there and reading. So if you're reading a specific book that might have to deal with it when they're little and something that kids could understand. Um, and if there's a fight or an argument, have it settled there, have it hashed out and worked out there. And you see that I've had people that beat the living daylights out of each other and became best friends, went to college together and are best friends with their kids now in the future. Mm -hmm. Things happen. People will argue, will always argue. People will always fight. Not everybody will always agree. It's how you come to the table and solve those issues before it becomes where one person is dominant over another mm -hmm. and that person feels that they have nowhere to go. But it can be fixed. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yes. All right, so I'm going to play a short clip for you about anti-bullying campaigns. Okay. 
It started as a simple look at bullying. UTA criminologist Seok Jin Jung analyzed the data collected from 7,000 students from all 50 states. He thought the results would be predictable, that anti-bullying programs would curb bullying. Instead, he found the opposite. Very disappointing and very surprising outcome, which is uh, our anti-bullying program, either intervention or prevention, does not work. Jung's study concludes students at schools with anti-bullying programs may actually be more likely to become a victim of bullying. Students at schools with no bullying programs were less likely to become victims. Stunning results for Zhang, to say the least. Usually people expect anti-bullying program has some impact, some positive impact. Oh, are you crying? You want your mommy? <laughs> yeah, we got it. <laughs> the videos used in many campaigns show examples of bullying and how to intervene. But Jung says the videos may actually teach students different bullying techniques and even new ways to bully through social media and texting. Now they are able to learn, okay, there's new technique, there's new skills. Okay, I want to try it. I want to try to find uh, the victim, you know, more vulnerable victim. Jung says some of the programs even teach students how to bully without leaving any evidence behind. This study raised our alarm. Hey, listen, there's a possibility of negative impact of the school bullying. And he says until the message delivered by anti-bullying programs improves, some programs may be doing more harm than good. Joel Thomas, CBS 11 News. All right, so give me your thoughts on that. Well, I think it, it goes to what we said right before the clip. I think it's better to just have op to know that you've set up a school or a system or a program that fosters, you know, goodwill, that fosters communi great communication, very supportive, that's inclusive of everyone, that always runs on a positive. The moment that you show how something can be done in a negative way, you just sparked that person's interest and said, wait a minute, I didn't know I could have done that and gotten away with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I agree with the way the video explains that in some cases you're going to have kids that are going to say, hey, you know what, especially when you're young, you, you feel almost like an immortal, nothing will ever happen to you. Yeah. And that's when people become a little bit more daring and they feel that they can do things without any repercussions. Mm -hmm. And so I think putting that into the, the kid's heads just doesn't make sense. I think n when, this, when a kid knows, you know what, I feel good, I know I can be myself here and I'm fine, they're gonna be fine and they're gonna be okay because that's already there. The moment you throw in something negative to show them, it, it kind of stirs the pot and now you have something that's tainted and you always have to be on the lookout to see how you can correct that. Okay, so positivity is the key. Yes. Yes. All right, so we're running out of time now, but what is your advice to the youth that's being bullied? Just like one, in one sentence. Give me just a good piece of advice okay. in one sentence. Don't ever think you're alone. Always tell someone, seek out help and don't do anything to hurt yourself because you feel that you can't handle the situation. There's always a solution and there's always a way out of it and it's not going to be like that for your whole life. It might just be a very short period of time that you're going to be upset or mad but you will get past that and that's why it's important to make sure you can reach out to someone. Thank you for your sentence Mr. Yeah, Brado. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me.